Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Sham Gosain again, continuing where we left off. We're trying to bring some short messages. And today, my message is about how we pronounce the name of our Father. This is something that has been lost since the children of the southern kingdom of Yehuda went into captivity into Babylon. They lost the proper Hebrew language that we call Paleo-Hebrew today. They lost that, and they came back with something they call modern Hebrew, but we know it as Aramaic, the Babylonian language. And they brought that back with them under Ezra especially. He was very versed in that language, and he brought it back into the land. And when he began speaking in that tongue, a lot of the poor people that was in the land that never had a corruption of their language, they had a problem understanding what Ezra was saying. So they had somebody to interpret, and they had given them the name Targums. And they would interpret and translate from the foreign language that Ezra had picked up in Babylon to the everyday Paleo Hebrew that they poor people that remained in the land were speaking and understanding. Later, that same group of Tagans grew to become the scribes in the days of when our savior Yahushua walked the earth. But how, why was this so? Why, why was this a, to become like that? Because even while they were still in the land, the reason they got expelled from the land was the violation of the laws of the father. So they were warned in many places, but especially Deuteronomy 28 to 30, Leviticus 26, and through the prophets, especially Jeremiah, which most people know as Jeremiah. They were warned that if they continue this trajectory of sinning and doing the things that is provoking our father, Yahuwah, they will be expelled from the land and they will be punished because they are desecrating not only his name by polluting it with the names of the other so-called gods of the nations that was around them. And they not only did that, they brought the false thing into the temple. And they were using those names in the temple to pretend they're calling the name of our father, Yahuwah. So back when this was first introduced to Moshe in Exodus chapter 3, we, we have the, the, what we call the Tetragrammaton, and most places you will see it written out like O-I-H-W-H. But when you look at the Hebrew context of those words, it means I am what I will be, or I will be what I am. In other words, what the Father is saying to Moshe here, and we know the person that was really doing the talking was Yahusha. He is the one that was talking to Moshe. He's saying that I will, I am existing in every tense, the past tense, the present tense, the future tense. So we could say, and the master said himself when he was here, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's quoting that very text from Exodus 3 when he had the encounter with Moshe. So those four letters has come down to us and people has tried to pronounce them using variations of how the letters are put. But the, the most common way it was pronounced has always been Yahweh. And how are we so sure that's the way it was pronounced? Because today, even today, in modern Israel or modern Judaism, the name of Yaakov's fourth son, we call them by our corrupt words, Judah. His name was not Judah. J was not discovered until the year 1530. His name was Yahuda. Listen to his name, Yahuda. Now, if we just look at the difference between Yahuwah and Yahuda, the second um, word on your screen, 
you will notice there's only one letter that is the difference here, and that's a dalet. That was added there. So if you remove the dalet, you get the things that you have at the top. So you're pronouncing the but the middle one, ya hu da. So just take out the D and you have Yahua. No big deal. So that's the key to understanding how to pronounce the name. We're not inventing something, it's there. We just need to pronounce it and be consistent in the way that we are pronouncing the name of this son of Yaakov. Because he got that name from the father's name because when he was born, his mother said, this is a gift from the father. Before she was trying to please her husband, but now she recognized this is a child from Yahuwah, so she called him Yahuda. And because this is the key to the whole thing that we could understand, when you drop down to the last um, acronym on your screen, you will notice it has all the above except the last two. It has a shin and an ayin. And those two, word, two letters are pronounced, you add the first three ya, and then husha. This shin is sh, a, sh, ya, sha, ya, husha. So you pronounce ya, husha. And that's when you, how you get his name. There is no ye, like Yeshua. There's no e sound here. It's an a sound. So when we are going to try to pronounce, and we should, we should, we must have reverence for the name of our father and reverence for the name of his son, because we know from scripture that we could pull up the um, text from the Safar, from Stephen Pigeon, who, who was a Hebrew scholar. And he says in Acts 2, 37 and 38, there is no other name under heaven whereby you can be saved, but Yahuwah, Yahusha. And you must be baptized in that name. So we know for a fact that this name was in the original text, but it has been removed and, and replaced with the word Jesus Christ. And in some place, just the word Christ. These are not in our Bibles, brothers and sisters. This will added stuff. If we want to return to the purity of the language and to serve our Father and our Savior in spirit and in truth, we have to return to truth. And what is truth? You know, this was the biggest problem I think Pontus Pilate faced in his whole life. He asked the most pertinent question. What is truth? And he was asking it of the being that is the that is personified truth. You are standing in front of the Mashiach, and he asked, "What is truth?" And he walked away. And truth was standing there, and he didn't get a chance to hear or see it. Although he was beholding him in his eyes, he did not get the explanation of what is truth. But when the old master was praying in John 17, he says. Sanctify them by your truth, O Father. Thy word is truth. So we know this, but something happened along the way when they apostatized and then half the kingdom moved to Egypt after they came back from, uh, I think some of them were there in Egypt before the Babylonian captivity and some after. But when they were down in Egypt, they were provoking Yahuwah to no end, and the book of Jeremiah, who, chapter 44, chapter 7, all over the book of Jeremiah, he was sent to them to tell them, stop this, Go, come back to the purity of the language, come back to the purity of the laws that Moshe had given you, and start, get, get, get rid of those things. But they refused, and then now you could see we have verse 26 of Jeremiah, who, 44, that says, Therefore, hear ye the word of Yahuwah, all you Yahuda, that dwell in the land of Mitzrayim. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, said Yahuwah, that my name shall no more be named in your mouth. So the father deliberately took his name out of their mouth because they had 
Lashon Hara. They had a corrupt tongue. They could not speak his word because that would be blasphemy. So he deliberately took his, his name out of their tongue. Went into Babylon and they picked up new words and they came back with what we call today Hebrew. But that's not Hebrew. That's a foreign tongue. And that's where Isaiah comes up. Very well then. With foreign lips and a strange tongue, I'll speak to you. Because this is what you want. So brothers and sisters, we need to go back if we are serious. And we really want to please the Father. And we really want to search, and as, as, as Shaul instructed Timothy, to study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. We just cannot sit back and just swallow everything that we have been told, even though there are evidence, even in modern times, that this is not right. Because there is no way in any form of language transliteration translation or anything that you can get from yahusha you could get jesus it's no way you can do it translation transliteration no way it doesn't it doesn't even come close transliteration means you could take something from one language into another but it will not lose its meaning it will carry the meaning all the way through you cannot do that with Yahusha and Jesus. It does not transliterate. So we know someone corrupted the words. When I was speaking about the kingdom on my first little talk, I said when Mashiach was establishing his kingdom, we, we, I, I want to go back and, and, and recap something I said there so you, will, you could connect. He says he was preaching the kingdom of Yahweh, not the kingdom of God. That's what they got in the in the in the scripture there. But the word God is a Teutonic word that is applied to any supernatural or divine being. Somebody that is uh, some beings that was higher than uh, regular human. It's not a it's not a name. It's a title. So when we have these type of things in our in our scriptures and we are trying to teach it and we are going on and we are calling him God and telling people about God. All the nations of the world use that word. But are they talking to our father? No. You ask a, a, a Muslim, his God is Allah. You ask a, a, a Hindu, his God is Shiva. So they have names for their God. You don't hear them talking about the word God as we do. When they're talking about their God, they use a name. That is the strange thing that is happening in our lives that we, we, we are blinded to see that. You talk to an Islamic person right now on the street and you ask about God. He doesn't go back and talk about God. He says, Allah, may his name be praised. Right away, he puts this special um, like reverence to it. May his name be praised. May his name be exalted. And, and he used the word Allah. They don't say God. Why is it that we, who are serving the one only true almighty God, I'm using that word, so that's because people relate to it, but the one supreme being, the almighty creator of heaven and earth, possessor of heaven and earth, and we are using a word that denigrates, that is a, is a generic word to, to, to describe him. You know, um, even the Mashiach says, the nice, didn't in your scripture say that you are gods? So is that how, how we have denigrated the father to bring him down to regular level of people? Because in the in the book of Judges, um, the book of Ruth, by the way, when she was when she told Naomi, I'm going back to you with you, and your people will be my people, and your gods will be my God. It wasn't she wasn't talking about Elohim, our father, she was talking about the judges. The rulers of the country were called gods. And you could see that plainly in Psalm 82, which we call the divine council. He was talking to those supervising angels that had corrupted the people. And he said, I say you are gods, but as men you will die. So therefore, this common word God is not a description of our father. It is a corruption. So 
when we are, when we are, I could carry on forever here, but I want to get back to how the corruption got into such a place that today, just to say Yahuwah, we are challenged by people. Where, well, well, how you guys were saying that? Where do you, how do you know this? Well, we know it because we look at the original text of the Hebrew. That's how we know. And as I give the litmus test to pronounce in his name is from that tribe, Yahuda. No Jew, no Israeli today will call his name um, sat, like something like Adonai. Or, no, they will pronounce his name. Maybe they will use the J, but they would say Judah. But you ask a Israeli or a Jew, they will say Yahuda. So if they could pronounce that son of Yaakov by his proper pronunciation, why are we having a problem pronouncing the father's name properly? It's because somebody don't want us to use the name. And I have scriptures and I have texts and history books to show that the, the Jewish people, maybe with good intentions, I am not judging and condemning, maybe with good intentions, wanted to protect the name. They didn't want people to, you know, they were very aware of the third commandment that says, do not carry the name of Yahuwah in vain. So maybe that was their motivation. They wanted to protect the name. So they invented fences around the name, made things like Adonai, like Hashem, to not say the word. But in so doing, they have misled a lot of people. And today, of the most misled people today are the people, and I am saying this with all love, brothers and sisters, when I use the word Christians, I am talking about believers. People that believe in, in Yahusha, the son of the living God, and made him savior of their life. And again, I said that word God because you, you, you are familiar with it. That's why I'm using it. Because when I speak, normally I don't use that word. But I'm saying it now so you could relate. When this being, the son of the living Elohim, the true almighty, when he came into this world, he was talking about his father and he said in everything he did he talked about his father i didn't do anything without my father telling me i didn't say anything without my father telling me to say it and he was given all the honor and glory to his father and in the scriptures it says to the father to the father and to the father in in our english bibles but when you get a hebrew text and this people will think how can you get a hebrew text of this language I have, a, I have a Bible over there called the Aramaic English New Testament. Now, this is written in the common new text we have today. But I don't want to go into that so much. Right now on the screen, you will see the Dead Sea Scrolls of the book of Isaiah. And in that, you will notice that there are no vowel points here. It's just letters. And this is continuous throughout that whole book of Isaiah. I was there not too long ago. I went to that um, dome. I looked at this text with my own eyes. And there are no vowel points here. Vowel pointing was invented by people we call the Masorets. And this was done in 9 AD, 9 to 11 AD. So I know the time is far gone now. And we will continue maybe another day to talk a little more about this. But before we go, I want you to know that the father said he will restore, he will restore his pure language to his people. And that restoration was promised in the book of Zephaniah. But then, when in that day, if you look at the beginning of this chapter, we talk about the day of the Lord. And in that day, he says, he'll restore to the people a pure language his pure language that he had originally handed down to Moshe. And brothers and sisters, we need to go back to our roots. We need to know what the father's true name is, how to pronounce it, what the son's true name is and how to pronounce it. And I'm telling you, beyond shadow of a doubt, when we start doing that, we will see the effects of the reality of the power in the name. The power in the name. You know, we don't understand how powerful the name of Yahuwah is, how powerful the name of Yahusha is. It destroys the yoke. It breaks down every barrier, every 
demon in hell runs for cover when you use the name Yahusha. So, brothers and sisters, I want to leave you with this today. Uh, that that quote that Stephen Pigeon put in Acts 2, 37 and 38. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby you will be saved. But in the name of Yahusha, Yahuwah Yahusha, be baptized in that name and you will receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. So I know maybe that word Ruach HaKodesh is a name that you're not familiar with, but this means the holy or set apart spirit, not holy, but the set apart spirit. So I would like to leave you with this. And now we come to the last part of this is this word here. When we get to the word today, I and mean, in most messianic congregation from which I came from, they tried to pronounce our masters, our savior's name by using a Hebrew form of his name called Yeshua. The word Yeshua is a derogatory name. This was in this was deliberately orchestrated by the Messiah and the rabbinic Judaism, um, Judaism as a word of denigration to kind of degrade our master. And it came from a, a acronym of Yamak Shemo Yupro. Um, and it simply means may his name be blotted out. So can you imagine? Even in our so-called attempt to call him by a name, which is not his proper name, what we are saying. Ignorance is no, I, I'm going to say this, ignorance is no defense when the, the truth is out there staring you in the face and you refuse to look for it. You cannot come to the father and say, well, I didn't know. You know, you can't trick him. He knows your heart. So if you are really serious and you want to know of the things that we have spoken so far today, just as I found it, you can find it. Just look it up and you'll see this word Yeshua means exactly that. May his name be blotted out. So why would you want to call upon him and say may his name be blotted out? Why would you say Yehovah and say Yah's name cast to ruins? Why would you use those terms? Is because you don't know the truth. If you knew the truth, you wouldn't do it. And to close, our master says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And I hope this message will help you on your road to freedom. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah.